Okay, folks, this is going to be a short video. Uh, I bought this pump off eBay um, for a project I'm doing. Uh, this is advertised as a suction pump for uh, turbos, like low mounted and rear mounted turbos, where it's important to get the oil out of the turbocharger because you can't drain it straight down into the crankcase of the engine. So uh, I'm using it for pressure for priming an engine, but uh, I couldn't get information on this um, as to pressure. So I'm basically I just took a gamble, ordered the pump. This is a common common pump that you'll find on the internet and on eBay. It was like sixty-five dollars U.S. So. Uh, it's going to be an unbiased review of the pump here because there may be other people that want to use it for pressure. What I did notice here, and it came with some fittings. I got a couple of barb, hose barb fittings that I'm going to use here. I'm going to test it to see, first of all, it's supposed to be self-priming. So I'm going to make sure that it actually does prime. It's got brass gears in it, so it should be good. Uh, they say it's okay to run it dry, which if you're using it for clearing out a turbocharger, yeah, it, it, it's not going to have a constant supply of oil, which it shouldn't need. Um, but anyways, I was going to put the fittings in, and I noticed inside, and this camera won't show it, so I'll put a still shot in. There's some brown crud in one of the ports here. The other side's fine. And I wasn't sure what it was, whether it was like gasket glue or caked oil or what it was. So I took a pick in there and scraped it out and ran it through my fingers, and it's very gritty. Um, and uh, it sparkles with brass, so uh, it looks like it's basically some brass machining sludge of some sort that's in there. So I'm going to wash it out. I mean, I didn't like having to clean up a used or a brand new pump like it's used. Hopefully, seeing as it hasn't been run long term like this, it should be okay. It shouldn't really do much damage, but still, it should it should have better quality control. So I'm going to put the camera down, I'm going to clean all that out, I'm going to put the fittings in it, power it up on a battery, and we're going to see if it uh, self-primes and pumps oil. Okay, I got it all set up to give it a run here. Uh, before we actually watch it perform, <laughs> I'm going to put up the still shots uh, of what I found when I opened up the pump. I took the cover off to look inside because uh, I found gobs of this brown abrasive stuff inside the ports, uh, uh, inside the gears, the teeth of the gear. So pulled the cover off and looked inside. Um, the uh, th There was a lot of this brown, shiny, gritty sludge in there. Obviously from machining the brass. The, um, the cover Take a look at the cover here. Uh, that's got some fairly deep score marks on it. That's not just polished from a little bit of a run-in. That's the uh, abrasive grit acting like a valve grinding compound. Also, you take a look inside the, uh, the bore here where the uh, gears run. At the bottom of the uh, bore, look at the... Those are really deep score marks. Uh, it, it's not going to affect the operation of the pump a lot but nonetheless a brand new pump should not look like that I would expect it to have a little bit of a polished shine to it from being test run uh, also you take a look at the o-ring here and that o-ring was covered in that brown grit which means that the pump was actually assembled with this brown sludge and grit already around. So it was evident that it wasn't clean. They did not clean that pump, the, the housing of the pump out. They just assembled it with all that crap inside there. So what I've got here, now this, it, it's marked, labeled as a marine fuel pump. So I'm assuming that it was originally designed for gasoline or diesel. Uh, these are marketed on the internet for sucking oil out of the turbo for uh, for the drain and uh, they also say uh, some places they say you can use it for a rear diff oil cooler that's pretty thick oil so what I've got I got a compromise here I've just got lightweight transmission oil in there 
and uh, there's a container. Now it's rated at just over, well it is rated exactly at 14 liters per minute, so I'm assuming that would be rated with fuel. And, uh, and that's with open flow, so uh, that would mean that there's no resistance, I'm not expecting to, it to make any pressure. Uh, I've got a fully charged battery here, and you notice that I've got red wires on both sides. Uh, it doesn't matter, you can just change the polarity. It, it wasn't marked in or out or uh, any description of rotation or flow, so it's a DC motor. I just reversed the polarity on the motor to change the, the direction of flow. Uh, it's rated at, uh, where does it say, 6 amps. 6 amps, uh, I would assume with, that's with no load on it, so it's not trying to make any pressure. Um, and so I've uh, got a 10 amp fuse in here, a red one. So I'm going to set the camera on the tripod, and I'm going to power this pump up. I haven't run it now. I did, after I put it together, I put some light oil in it when I assembled it, just to lubricate it. So it's got a little bit of an advantage. It's not technically dry. Um, we're going to see. It's either going to blow bubbles if I got the polarity wrong, or it's going to be pumping in here. So, uh, 14 liters uh, a minute, and say maybe it'll do 10 if it's thicker oil, so it should take about uh, 6 seconds to empty that, that liter, 1 liter container of oil. So I'm going to set you up in the tripod and you watch from up there. Okay, NASA, we are a go. Let's see what happens here. It's pumping pretty good. And that was a liter of oil. It certainly can pump oil fast. <laughs> yeah, it, it did that just fine. So uh, it, the pump is noisy. Um, you wouldn't want to have that solidly mounted to any part of your frame or body or anything you want definitely want to make sure you got good rubber mounts on it or you have a good loud exhaust system okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to put the oil back in the uh one liter container here and i'm going to um put my pressure gauge on here now the the pump is not rated for pressure it's rated for volume but it's got to make some pressure so for my purposes i would like about 20 psi out of it so we're going to see what it can do here. I'm going to um, move the oil back in, into that container and I'm going to run it very briefly just to get oil in here so that it actually has a prime and it's not trying to make pressure when it's got air in the pump. I'm going to give it that much anyways. Okay, so I'll be back to you in a minute. Okay, I'm back to you. i got my uh, pressure gauge on here now. Confirmed that there actually is oil right up to the exhaust port here. So the gears are immersed in oil, it's that means it's primed, it should have no excuse for making pressure. And uh, although you can't see the uh, gauge from that distance, I'll uh, zoom in when I edit here. But uh, 25 PSI is about here, here's the, here's the needle right now at zero, and that's 25 and that's 50. So uh, I'll watch it and uh, we'll zoom in when I do the edit, so here we go. Well, we found the limit of the 10 amp fuse. <laughs> uh, so, 20 amp fuse. I figured that was going to happen. That's why I had the fuses close by. <laughs> the pump is having to work now because it's tr trying to make pressure and not just move volume. So, take two. Here we go. Well, it made about 150 PSI before, <laughs> before it blew the fuse, and that was a 20 amp fuse. Um, it's got about 14 gauge, I'd say 14 gauge wire on here, so uh, I don't really want to go much higher than 20. I will, uh, considering I'm deadheading the pump, <laughs> that's asking a lot for it, but uh, so in my in my application, I'm thinking I would probably want to put a bit of a bleed, a bleeder in here to bypass some of the uh, fluid to go from the exhaust 
back to the inlet so it doesn't have to push everything out through here because when you're trying to prime an engine you're not going to get much flow at all it's uh, just going to do what it does now and if it's got cold oil it'll it'll uh, probably not even do that well Okay, 30 amp fuse installed. That's as high as I'm going. Uh, obviously, it can make, it can make pressure. I can I saw that, um, but I'm going to have to expect to be able to bleed some of that off to, to, so that the pump actually rotates. Because right now it's <laughs> the motor is stalling. So we're going to see if uh, if we can get any more or a long any more pressure or a longer runtime with uh, 30 amps. It'll probably blow this fuse too. So. We're, here we are. Okay, so that that was it's it's jumping to 175 psi. So it makes the pressure, but you're get, if you're going to deadhead it like this, like using it for priming, it's going to have to have a, a return. So if you were using this to pump fuel, you'd have to have a return type regulator because if the regulator shuts off because there's enough pressure to the engine, it'll, it'll blow the fuse. So there's going to have to be a return style on this. So uh, with some sort of a, uh, a restrictor on the return line. If you're pumping gear oil, which I, I, I might do that. I might see if how, how the flow is for pumping gear oil. Um, you don't need any pressure for that application. If you're using it for a, to uh, scavenge uh, the oil from a turbocharger, I'd say this is more than adequate because I mean we saw it go through a liter of oil in about 10 seconds and uh, it's, The oil is not going to be going through your turbo bearings that fast. So I think it's well suited for that application um, As far as uh, how the durability of it um, I don't know judging by the quality of the pump uh, like I say, if it puts out 175 PSI now, and the thing is fairly scored, I would think it's probably still going to, now that I've cleaned it, it will probably run for a long time. Um, but as far as the motor goes, I don't know if you're using it for a fuel pump or for a scavenge pump, it's going to be running all the time the engine is going. I'm just going to be running literally just minutes a year. So, uh, and it's going to be just cold oil, mostly cold oil. It's not going to be hot turbo fuel running through the pump because that, that will, you know, fuel won't be a problem as far as heat goes. But if you're pumping hot turbo oil through here, that, that heat's going to transfer through the pump here, plus the power of the pump itself. So, um, if you're going to put a cooler on the return line, I would put it before the pump. That would be a smart idea. But uh, again, I don't know how long it's going to last. If I uh, am still using this setup from a year from now, I'll post. Or if I have any problems, I'll, I'll just update uh, the description. So uh, thanks for watching the video. If you choose to use one of these pumps, you do so at your own risk. Obviously, they're not too concerned about keeping the pump clean when they assemble a brand new pump. Kind of disappointed on that. But it does perform, at least right now. Um, so please subscribe if it's been helpful and uh, like it. Thanks very much for watching. So I thought I'd throw this uh, in here as well. What I've done here, I've created a return line with a valve on it that uh, will create a restriction which will allow the pump to actually move fluid and make pressure and uh, not burn out obviously. So we have to keep flow going through here even if we in the end result require only very little flow. So. Uh, Basically, I've just got a, pe a petcock valve here, like that. That's fully open, that's fully closed. We'll start with fully open. I don't know, I can zoom in with the, with the editing to get a close-up on that pressure gauge. So, uh, here we go. This is going to be wide open, and it's not going to have much pressure at all. But it's certainly got the flow. I close it, that's 25 psi in it. So it lots of flow. There's 50. It's still got lots of flow. 
and actually it'll, it'll go all the way up to 100 and that's as far as I took it. <laughs> it'll probably go higher but I'm not sure uh, how much current it's going to take here. Right now it's uh, running at, at 30 psi right now and the wires aren't getting warm and I've got a 30 amp fuse in there. I didn't try it with a lighter fuse. So I don't know if that's of any interest to you, but if you're going to use it for priming, you have to know that you, you have to have flow through the pump, even if you only require very little uh, actual useful flow out of here. You still have to have a return line. So, so there it is. Okay, thanks for watching.